Hi, everyone. Good morning and good evening. Maybe that's where you're at, depending on which part of the world you're from.、Uh, thank you for joining me、uh, live in our live learning today.、Um, this is something we're experimenting with on our Facebook page to、uh, make it easy for you、uh, to attend some of these live trainings.、Uh, in the past, if you've joined me in live webinars or live training in the past, we've used、um, a different system of webinars to be able to get you this information. But we thought, hey, why don't we use something? That、uh, you're on here、uh, quite often, right? And、uh, it gives a chance for you to just come on in and not have to sign up for anything、uh, to watch our training. And we will be doing these things about once a month.、Uh, and it's really great for me because I get to interact with you live and collaborate with you live here,、uh, and、uh, be able to have these collaborative discussions、uh, around all things、uh, with life and career transition,、uh, building your side hustles, and、um, Creating that life of freedom and work of freedom that、uh, you're probably here、uh, to try to do for yourself.、Uh, so today's topic is all about、uh, three ways to overcome your fear of uncertainty. So、uh, if you're here to learn,、uh, you're probably in the midst of some sort of change.、Uh, and if you're joining me live, I would love to hear from you.、Uh, what sorts of change is currently going on in your life,、uh, and what、um, what is it about your fear of uncertainty、uh, that you would love to? Learn about today. So this could be your personal life, right? Things that are going on and changes in your personal life.、Uh, maybe it's your work.、Uh, you're looking to quit your job and doing something different with your life.、Um, Or relationships, or environmental, anything、uh, that you're going through change with,、uh, I would love to hear what is that,、uh, what is happening in your life today,、uh, and what fears do you think is creeping up when you feel uncertain?、Uh, now, this is really normal to feel ungrounded and、uh, a little bit, you know, frazzled when we are pursuing a path that is less ordinary, right? No other, maybe no one you know around your life is about to make the changes that you're about to make,、uh, and there is no rules and guidebook for you to sort of be. Into you know a lot of times when we live、uh, a very conventional life, a very traditional life,、um, lots of these rules have been given to us in some way, right? We kind of know we have to、um, go to go to go go to university or go to school, right? We graduate hopefully with a degree that、uh, will last us forever till the day we die, or that's what we've we've been told. Uh, and uh, you know we also know that in a particular type of profession or vocation,、um, there is some rules around that. You know how many years you have to be in a position to be able to upgrade to、uh, a manager role or whatever、uh, credential that you're looking to go after. There's other people beyond you, right? That have sort of Paved the path in some way、uh, to show you what needs what you need to be doing. But however, when you go off the beaten track, when you don't follow traditional conventional rules, which is why you're here,、um, it can be exciting that you're finally taking control of your life and、uh, being creative in the way that you want to reinvent your life and go towards the outcomes that you truly want to have. But then it also comes with this feeling of absolute overwhelm. And fear,、uh, because you get to make up your own rules now, right?、Uh, the power of freedom is exciting, but、uh, fucking scary <laughs> at the same time. And I think,、um, you know, as much as you hear success stories about how people have done what they've done,、uh, it, we also need to talk a lot about that uncertainty period of time. That you know, a lot of the emotional、um, resilience that needs to be cultivated at this moment in time in order to、um, have you do the things that you want to do but have never. Done before, right? So our brains at this moment in time、uh, can really help.、Uh, sorry, can, can really project all sorts of stories, right? That can make you feel really panicked.、Uh, that keeps you sort of stuck in where you think you should be,、uh, and it's really hard to play big when we feel so scared, right? And when we take this leap of faith, when we believe that if we take this leap of faith、uh, of what we're about to do, this can potentially lead to very disastrous outcomes, and、uh, that will very likely、um, send all sorts of panic. Modes or panic alert bells in your head、uh, that will sort of sabotage you, right, from making any move at all. So today's collaborate collaborative discussion is、uh, we're going to really talk about how to build your tolerance. For change and uncertainty, in order to live your best version of your life, where you do make up the rules, but you're also really mindful about what you need to do for yourself in order to go through that change and build that resilience for change. And it's not something that you just sort of get up and it happens to you, right? It's a muscle that you really need to build. 
So if you're joining me live or watching the replay, we do have a resource for you that I've created to sort of help you uh, follow through with what we're going to be discussing today. And it might be something you replay again, even if you're joining me live here, uh, where you walk yourself through some of these clarity questions that I've, I've constructed for you to help walk you through those these three points that we're going to talk about today. Uh, so if you haven't downloaded it already, we have a guide and a resource tool with these clarity questions I'll be going through today. Uh, that you can have handy as you listen to uh, this training, um, where you can download it above this um, post that has a link to it uh, that will allow you to download that guide and follow through as we walk through these questions together. Okay, so uh, that should be a convert kit page uh, where you can uh, just enter your email and they'll send it to you by email, uh, and then you can download that Google Doc and follow through as we go along. Okay. So if you're joining me live here or on the replay, I do have a question for you to get started. Uh, I would love to know, and you can post uh, below this video in the comments field, uh, is what scares you most about taking the leap to an unfamiliar or uncertain path? What scares you most about taking the leap to an unfamiliar or uncertain path? path. I would love to hear from you. Uh, some of you guys might be taking the leap into entrepreneurship. Some of you might be taking the leap just to have the bravery to tell your spouse you're about to change jobs. Uh, some of you may be actually moving countries and maybe trying to live somewhere more affordable for your escape plan. And that is uh, scary for you. Whatever it is, I would love to hear uh, what scares you most about taking the leap to an unfamiliar or uncertain path. All right, so uh, as we introduce this topic today, um, what I want you to know is that in society, we have been given these rules, as we talked about, of how to get to traditional trajectories of success, right? We've learned it from our parents, we've learned it from our teachers, we've learned it from other people who are doing the same things. Uh, so when we do change our path, it can feel really ungrounding uh, and shaky to take that leap into the unknown, right? And this uncertainty really fills us with these feelings of fear, panic, and anxiety. And then what we do is we start to create these stories, right? These worst case scenarios. Like if I start this business and I fail, I'll be a laughing stock in my community. Or, you know, I've been a lawyer for 20 years and now I'm wanting to be a novelist. Um, you know, what will people think of me? Maybe they'll think I'm having a midlife crisis too early or, you know, I'm giving up on something that I know how to do. So we always sort of make up a lot of these stories and it's great to be mindful of what these stories are because it kind of tells you a lot about your biggest fear. And we want to be able to utilize these fears appropriately. Nothing is wrong with fear. Nothing's wrong with feeling afraid. That's the first thing I want to say. Nothing's wrong with you. Every normal person has fear. And fear doesn't, it just doesn't mean that you shouldn't be going forward with the path that you want to be creating for yourself. Um, so when we do end up playing small because of this fear, we sort of play into our fears as well by uh, either never moving at all or moving very tentatively, like sort of not fully committing to that leap, right? And hence why a lot of times you might feel that I've been thinking about these awesome goals that I want to make for my life, but they just never come into fruition. It's very likely it's because you haven't gone all in. You haven't actually really navigated a lot of what your fears are trying to tell you right? In order to create the right action to actually be able to do this effectively uh, and to feel good while you do it. You're sort of shoving it under the rug, hoping that you'll get brave, but not ever actually really moving towards doing anything at all, right? As I said, very normal occurrence when we're about to do something big or something different in our lives. So what we want to try to do instead of this being very stuck point of where we're at is to build a tolerance for change and for a tolerance for uncertainty uh, so that we can keep moving forward despite feeling the fear. So we're going to start with these three lessons that I've learned personally myself on how I do this. Hi, Heather. Great for you to join us. Um, and I want to share with you these three big lessons that actually uh, help move the needle for me. And by the way, you know, five and a half years later of being an entrepreneur, I am still scared shitless of lots of things. It doesn't mean I have the superhero cape where I've just been like the most bravest woman I ever have imagined. Uh, it's just that I got, I got a lot better at moving faster and moving despite the fear and being able to actually self-analyze and self-assess and help myself through that fear, right? Rather than just remaining uh, comfortable, right? And neutral in the place that I'm in. Hey, Bettina. All right, let's go into lesson one. 
What's the first thing that I would want you to know about in terms of building your tolerance and your resilience for change? Uh, the first lesson is don't avoid the feeling of discomfort. That is the number one thing you should stop doing is feeling bad and shameful about having discomfort. One of my favorite uh, uh, TED Talk speakers, and you might have uh, heard of her on, on, on the TED Talk, her name is Susan David. She's the author of Emotional Agility. Uh, she says a, a quote that I love all about this topic. Uh, she says, discomfort is the price of admission to a meaningful life. Now, that is such a refreshing take on not actually going fight the fear and, you know, punch fear in the face and who cares? Because actually we do care. We do get emotionally fucked up when we feel the feelings of failure and self doubt, you know, and we have, when we have imposter syndrome, for example, we have to acknowledge that these feelings are happening and there's nothing wrong with fear. So if you ever watch Susan Davis TED talk around emotional agility and emotional resilience, she really talks about actually allowing yourself to actually be empathetic and lean into that fear uh, because acknowledging it helps you to recognize what is trying to tell you. And also it gives you actual practical actions that you might need to be cultivating in order to move past that fear. Now, there is a lot of value in fears if we choose to utilize it as a tool to give us clues for knowing what actions we need to take. Because very likely the fear is actually almost like, you know, an alarm bell, right? Oh, wait a second, we're about to do something abnormal. I want, I want you to be safe, so why don't we think about this? That's what fear is usually trying to tell you, right? But when we avoid feeling scared, when we don't admit that we're scared, when we actually pretend to be brave, um, we sort of add this extra layer of weight that I feel that is this uh, uh, feeling of shame and guilt. Anyone here feels shameful for not being brave or when you look at other people making these big leaps or your friends starting businesses so quickly or whatever it may be, you're like, why not me? Why am I so slow? Why am I so scared, right? So when you give yourself this hard time for being a scaredy cat, you're actually really in a way putting this extra weight of shame and guilt that is not helpful to um, get to where you want to go. Because when we feel shame and guilt, right? Anytime we do that, we become five years old again. And we're like, no, not going anywhere. It's going under the blankets. I don't want to deal with this because now you've added an extra layer of feelings, right? So first you were just scared and now you're shameful of that fear, right? And that's this extra layer we don't need to put upon ourselves. So not sure if you guys do that to yourself. I sure do. I'm very much of a perfectionist, someone that likes to do things without failing. So when I feel scared, I feel like I'm losing control, right? I don't have control over my my circumstance. And that is something I'm not used to having, being someone who is a perfectionist. And so when I feel shameful, I don't ask for help. I don't go and get a mentor. I don't actually talk about what I feel about my fear. And that actually shoves it under the rug and doesn't give me any insight to play with. And that can absolutely be happening to you. So instead of piling on the extra weight of shame and guilt, I would like for you to ask these questions. And again, if you download it, the free uh, document and the free guide and clarity questions, you'll get these questions to go over again after this training. Uh, but here are some of the questions to ask yourself instead, right? When you start feeling these uh, injections of fear, ask yourself, what am I afraid of and why? We want to get to the root of why the fear is coming up, right? You might be actually sometimes saying, oh, I'm afraid of, um, doing my business or creating a business that's not successful. But if you keep asking why you're afraid of that and kind of keep going down the rabbit hole of asking why, 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 you might actually get to the root that a lot of it might be things like being judged for failing, right? Uh, or losing an identity that other people rely on you for or your family has to rely on you for uh, and you can't be successful in that identity anymore. Maybe it's your fear of success. Some people uh, might think that if I'm actually successful, you know, things might have to change around my life. I might have to have more boundaries around my relationships. I might actually have to put myself first when I choose this path. And that can scare a lot of people. I work with a lot of, a lot of moms as well, by the way. Um, and moms feel huge shame all the time doing something of their own because their identity has been tied to being a great wife, being a great mother, you know, and doing that first, prioritizing other people. And if they were to put themselves first, what they're most afraid of is other people are going to uh, feel that they're failing them or they're abandoning them. And they don't, they don't want that sort of identity with their family and friends. And that might actually be your fear, you know? So it's really great to acknowledge what that is. Another question to ask yourself is what am I hiding from? 
right? What am I really hiding from? So if I know what I need to do to get to where I need to go, right? And I know what I'm afraid of, but just willing to go through that fear. But what am I really hiding from? Maybe it's that I do have a voice. I recognize I have a voice to share. Hence why that's my motivation to start a business, for example, right? Or I want more meaning in my, my work. So I'm wanting to take more control over the way that I create my role. But I might be hiding from that because I may not feel that my voice is good enough. Or I might feel like I'm not a new voice in the industry and will anyone listen to me, right? There could be all sorts of reasons about what you're hiding from. And again, it could be about this new identity or new role you're about to step into that you're super afraid to show up for. Another question to ask is, am I afraid of the process or the result? Now, what I mean by that, some people are afraid of the process because they actually need to have steps, right? They actually need to know, I don't have clarity. I know where my goal is, but actually I don't know how to get there. You know, I might need to break it down further. And that's maybe be the work that you need to do, breaking down that work. That is the journey or the map to get to the goal and the result. Or it could be about the result itself. What if the goal changes everything else in my life? What if I decide to actually change my relationship? Sometimes that happens. I've had people that change their lives and end up getting a divorce. <laughs> that is not usually the outcome that we want to, um, you know, advocate, but that happens when you have a life change, other parts of your life could change. So um, you want to sort of identify what are you most afraid of? Is it the process or the result? And then lastly, what's the worst case scenario and how likely is it going to happen? So we talked a lot about uh, your brain injecting all sorts of uh, worst case scenarios, right? Building up stories of failure that can happen before you do something. Um, so what is that story like? Let your egoistic brain sort of pan that out. Let it have its way of talking and sort of look and see where it's bringing you. A lot of my fears end up telling me I'll be homeless and alone. <laughs> Anyone else have that same fear? Um, Hey, Annie, nice to see you, Annie. Um, and, you know, so really get through to that story of what that ego was trying to tell you that could happen to you. Let it have its worst case scenario meltdown, you know, and purge, but then actually recognize like how likely is it going to happen? Is this something, am I really going to be homeless? If I have a degree, I could find a job elsewhere. I could make ends meet if I need to. I could move in with my mother if necessary. It's not ideal, but I will not be on the street. Sometimes we have to sort of take a look at what is actually realistic because fear tends to um, sort of produce all, all sorts of unrealistic scenarios that will never come true, but we need to sort of let it talk it out so that it has its say and it's not shoved un under the rug. So if you're listening today, I have a question for you. What are you afraid of and why? Right. So if you went through some of those questions, uh, Jen, you said you have that fear of being homeless. I think we all do sometimes when we've grown up in very sort of uh, poor families like I have definitely done that. Uh, and I have a horrible relationship with money back in the day. So, you know, that was a fear that came up for me. But if I really looked at all the times I've never been employed, you know, unemployed, you know, I've always tried to be employed. I know that I have skills to share, even if it's not my own business. Um, you know that you can help yourself, right? And that sometimes you have to put those conditions in place to allow your, um, you know, your, your brain to sort of recognize there is an alternative plan in case something uh, doesn't work out for you, right? So what are you afraid of? Get real honest. And this is where you might do it in this platform is what are you afraid of and why, right? And uh, go through some of the questions that you downloaded to get through to those um, clarity questions. All right. Lesson number two on how to build your tolerance for uncertainty and change. Uh, lesson number two is identify the missing skill, knowledge, or awareness that can ease your fears. Now, uh, you may have heard me say this before, if you've attended other trainings in the past, is that uh, fear is really just, in, in my opinion, a missing gap of uh, information, a missing gap of knowledge, skills, and awareness that's very likely causing your anxiety and your fear. If you don't know something, we can actually have a proactive action to find out what those missing gaps of information is for me. So for people who are afraid to start a business, for example, a very practical question or a missing gap of information is I don't know my strengths enough to know what business to start. I don't know if my strengths will be valued if I try to make money with it. And those are good questions. Like those are not questions to ignore. You know, um, and, 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 and I think that's something to explore, you know, in terms of what can I do about this question that's going to allow me to ease this fear a little bit. So some of the questions you can ask here in this sort of second step uh, is, can I get more information to gain better clarity? What am I missing in terms of my own self-awareness of my strengths or, or whatever it is that's missing for you? Do I have a knowledge gap about the thing that I'm about to do, right? So some people I have, um, you know, um, 
talk about digital nomadism. They're like, I want to move to Bali just like you. I want to move somewhere else and be location independent, but that scares the shit out of me. Uh, and that could be because you don't know what it feels like to live in a country like that. You don't know what it feels like to make an income from a country like that. You don't know what kind of business to start maybe to make money from um, uh, being abroad. And that is the missing gap you will need to get help with or explore or experiment or research on in order for you to feel that you can move abroad, right? Uh, Jen, you said, uh, let me go back in there. I think you said something about, uh, it just disappeared, the comment. Uh, but I think you said something about uh, afraid of being successful, right? Just in case, or not being successful, sorry. Uh, and you might have to go back in the workforce, right? And that feeling of shame. Uh, that happens to a lot of people. And a lot of times it's all, it's all in our heads. We've sort of uh, predetermined what people will judge us on and criticize us on. But your worst critic is very likely yourself. Uh, and you're probably the one that's going to judge yourself more than other people. I think most people um, already know you're brave for trying to take that leap and even if you decide to change paths or you might have to get a part-time job they're probably still admiring you for even taking the leap because they're not going to do that uh, as much as you have you know so you have to give yourself kudos for giving a try and know that even if you have to get a job that's no shame in that we have to pay the bills we have to feed the kids we have to have a roof over our head and it's totally okay to have side uh, side hustles right I have clients that drive Uber, you know, or babysit or dog sit as a way of making a side income, you know, while they pursue their core business, because we know that income doesn't come right away. And there's no shame in doing all that as you transition. And you need to let go of that feeling of being perfect, you know, feeling good about that, um, which uh, I think it starts from ourselves, right? Annie, uh, you said your fear of not knowing what I'm good at. Yeah, that is a fear a lot of people have about leaving their jobs. So your job is not to perpetuate that fear, right? By just saying, I don't know what I'm good at. It's actually to say, well, what can I be good at? What sorts of assessments can I do to myself? What do I need to get a coach, a career coach, or an identification of skills assessment, right? Just real, sort of look at my inventory of jobs I've done in the past, what I've been uh, actually you know, uh, has been meaningful for me to do. And can I explore actually trying out that role? You know, so if I'm good at writing, for example, but I've never done it to make an income, uh, could you just offer to write for other people for free? You know, uh, could you put yourself up on fiverr.com and actually do a thousand words to edit someone's manual or, you know, write a bio page for someone and test out your skills before you can actually say, I don't have anything to offer, right? So that idea of experimentation, Annie, for you is going to be um, really important so that that fear isn't creeping up the entire time. Uh, another question to ask yourself is, what don't I know about myself, uh, my motivation, or my values that should be driving my actions, right? A lot of times we might have these dreams, these goals of what we want to have, this amazing paradise on the other side of the rainbow, uh, but we have to know why that whole thing of what we're trying to achieve is important to, to us. Why is it more important than the fear itself? You know, the cost of not pursuing my dreams, the cost of not going after something I've been thinking about for so many, many moons. You know, what's that costing me to remain where, where we're at? Um, a lot of times we look at the cost of failure, the cost of like shit not working out, but we also don't look at the cost of like, well, if I'm unwilling to go through that discomfort, right? And trying new things. What could also happen that's really costly for me forever if I don't make a move, right? And what values am I are really, you know, driving my actions for change? So for example, if my value is truly freedom, right? Freedom to express myself, freedom to do work I love, freedom to live from anywhere, and I remain here, as where I am, then I'm not honoring my values. And do I want to live that way, right? So we have to be really honest about what those values are and how that can actually be a lot of a higher priority than the, the value of our fears. And then lastly, you only know what you know. So sometimes you have to sort of outsource your worries and outsource your concerns to someone else, to support systems that we can absolutely be cultivating in our environment to actually uh, instill newfound knowledge into our, into our uh, circumstance. So the, the question you can ask is, do I know someone who has been in this position where I am who can provide detail around what currently feels abstract and scary? So if you can't get that information or things feel super hazy, you've done your research, you've done that self accountability and self assessment and you're still missing in like, how can I really do this? What should I be doing, you know, to eliminate this fear or know the rest, the right steps, right? To get to my goal, you might actually need to talk to other people. Is there anyone living a life that you currently are, are, are hoping to lead or starting a business you want to start, right? Or having, uh, being able to hire a mentor or a coach. Uh, or, or some sort of advisor that can help you, that have done what you are planning to do and can shortcut you to answers, 
you know, or just having these conversations with other people uh, that might be taking a leap themselves. You know, they might have gone through some ways of doing so that can be really helpful to you as you do this change, right? Don't always try to take it on on your own. It can be very lonely and scary dealing with fear that way, uh, but actually find communities and find people to outsource that worry to by asking that same question. So I have a question for you in this lesson. What do you think is the missing gap of knowledge, skills, or self-awareness that you need to find out more about at this current moment that's gonna help you ease this fear a little bit? And I promise you, if you sit with each of these questions one by one and answer them from an honest place, you will have clarity on what to do next uh, because your answers will provide information to really create an action list from an empowered place and really allow you to grow and succeed. So share with me, what do you think is your missing gap of knowledge and skills and awareness that can help you if you know that answer, whether it's outsourcing it or finding it out on your own, can help you get to your goal uh, in a much more easier way. Okay, let me know in the comments. Okay, lastly, lesson number three. Uh, build your tolerance for uncertainty by making micro decisions. Okay, so as I mentioned in the beginning, I wasn't very brave myself. I still am not always the bravest person in the room. But what I do do really well in these days is I make smaller decisions in order to allow myself to be closer to the bigger goal and the bigger dream that I have for my life and for my business, for anything that I choose to do that is my better version of life. Now, most humans are not like a Tony Robbins style person. Uh, we aren't just people that face adversity really well uh, and just sort of go, I can do this and I can just, you know, um, talk myself into doing things. Um, you know, Tony Robbins is a beast of a man and he's amazing and he, that's why he does what he does. Uh, but most of us may not be in that state of mind or even in a circumstance at the moment that, um, you know, that, that really makes us feel very brave. And that's really normal. I think 99% of people are here because most of us are not a, we'll jump off a cliff and hope a parachute opens kind of people. We are people that take calculated risks. We're people that need to feel some safety net. We need some safety net to make small jumps, right? So we need to sort of uh, dictate for ourselves what is that next safety net we have to um, create in order for us to just move slowly and more sustainably towards our big goals. Because the truth is incremental decisions and actions are really what gets you to your goal in more of a sustainable way and less of an emotional uh, burdening way when you can do things slowly, right? Slowly but surely. Uh, but you do something, right? Something small every single time. So to not scare the shit out of yourself and talk yourself out of things more often than not uh, because you've jumped way too fast or you've overplanned things or you have too high of expectations for yourself, we do need to take smaller bites right, towards our goals to really ease ourselves into courage, right? That's the only way to build that muscle of resilience and build that muscle of courage. So whenever you feel really scared, when you look at your goal and you go, holy shit, that feels so far, that feels like something I can't achieve right away, you're right. So what can you do instead, right, in order to make this work for you? So instead of looking at what won't work, what is hard, what is difficult, or what feels hard, shift your focus to what can work, what can I do, what can I be accountable for today and capable of doing today that can let this be easy, right? If it feels too difficult, you've, you've chewed off too big of a step, right? Or you haven't found out enough information to make that step, and that's where your work should be at. OK, and I always love asking myself whenever I feel a bit trumped by what to do next is what is one small thing I can do today to honor the goals that are important to me? Just one thing. And that could be just picking up the phone and calling someone that can get me out of this rut of feeling bad about myself. Or one thing I can do is actually just stop thinking about the future and focus on what I can do for to really help with my environment today. You know, or do one small thing, you know, with Annie, you said, um, I don't know what I might be good at, right? I'm, I'm an, I don't know what I can do with my skills. That maybe one of the things to do is not to know what business to start, but actually to go, what am I good at? Let me take a note of, pad of paper out and actually start taking inventory of skills that I know how to do, things that I know that other people may not know how to do, and I can give value publicly with it, and it might be something to experiment with. That can be a great place to start and something very doable than Let's just start a business today, right? That's too big of um, a, a goal to me. And one really big important question to really ask yourself here is what am I willing to tolerate to have what's really important to me? 
I really love this question because, uh, you know, one of my favorite writers is Mark Manson, right? Uh, and Mark Manson says, you know, every decision you're ever going to make, you're going to eat a shit sandwich, right? And, and you got to discover or identify which shit sandwich you're willing to swallow because anything that you do, even if you're passionate about something, even if you found your passion, which you thought, great, that is awesome. That passion will still come with a shit sandwich. That, that passion will still have a cost <laughs> in a way uh, of pursuing it. But we want to at least make that thing that you're about to pursue um, really worthwhile, that you're willing to actually tolerate some of these shit sandwiches you're about to eat because the reward of that 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 goal or that reward of that decision is going to you know be a lot more rewarding and and a lot more um it trumps you know that fear that you're going to feel while doing it uh so for example if you're an artist okay you love to sell your your paintings or your art or you love to design right what if you want to be an artist and you want to be known to be an artist and you want to advocate for yourself as an artist you're going to need to tolerate being rejected because that's what happens to artists and musicians and creative people. I'm not an art person. I can barely uh, draw a, a stick man, but I do look at my work as a piece of art, right? I write about the things I care about. Uh, when I teach something, uh, it comes from my heart. It doesn't really come too much from the logical brain. Uh, and that's something around the passion that I'm, you know, backing. But to put myself out there, to talk to you guys today live, like people could be like, you're full of shit and I don't believe what you're saying or I don't want to do that. You know, I'm going to have to tolerate <laughs> this idea of being rejected and criticized in order to advocate for my art. So to me, everyone is an artist in some form or another. You don't have to be a musician or a writer or a, a painter to be an artist. You're putting creative things out there to help in the world and you will be criticized and you will have naysayers and people that don't believe in your work. Uh, but you'll have to tolerate that shit sandwich because the idea of actually impacting some people and being able to say your thing and spread your voice around the world and spread your message, that might actually be the thing that you're most rewarded with, but you also have to deal with this, right? The, the toleration of being rejected. And that's something to accept. And when we can accept that some of our goals and decisions we are about to make in life will come with hard things, then you're less likely to beat yourself up about going through some of that uncertainty and going through a bit of those hard moments of, you know, rejection or difficulty or failure because it's just part of the formula. Nothing's wrong has happened to you. And when we don't feel a feeling of wrongness, then we don't feel as much, much of that shame and that guilt we just talked about in the beginning, right? Less of that weight of shame and guilt. Uh, so, what I would love to hear from you is also what's one small thing post in the comments below. If you were to look at that fear that you have or the uncertainty that you have about moving forward with a goal that you have, what is just one small thing you can do today, right? Like just I said, pick up the phone, write a, a, a list of inventory, do some research. What is that one small bite sized action that can be done in like an hour uh, that can help you at least honor the goal? Even if it's not going to get you there right away, it's a step forward towards it. Um, so as you do more of these micro decisions in your life, making small decisions, right, towards your goal instead of taking a big chunk, uh, you can really build this tolerance through this muscle because muscle is built through experience. Because a lot of times when you do fail, which you will, uh, you can actually say, oh, I totally failed there. I fucked it all up, but I didn't die, right? It didn't really, it wasn't the last thing that ever happened to me. And I can get up again, dust myself off and begin again. Right. But we do need that exposure therapy <laughs> to be able to face reality, see that actually what we've concocted in our stories and our worst case scenarios did not happen. And that's going to help us to actually do that better again over and over again. Right. Exposure therapy is your friend. And we do that a lot. Uh, definitely uh, in, you know, uh, my students in uh, the academy or the retreat that we run, we call this imperfect action. And we also call this scare sighted. Uh, scare sighted is being scared about doing something, but you're also really excited. It's usually the indicator you're about to, you're, you want to do that thing really badly. You're not just excited. A lot of things you're about to do uh, well and you want to do bigger in your life will come with those mixed feelings of being excited and really scared shitless. And that's the sign you should be looking for. If you're just like, oh my God, this is awesome. And I'm, I'm not scared at all. You may not actually be playing that big. You might actually just not be at the cusp of your comfort zone. Uh, and it may not be exactly the biggest piece of what you want to do, right? So build your tolerance for uncertainty by making uh, micro decisions. 
All right, so hopefully that was helpful for you, those three steps on how to overcome your fear of uncertainty and build your tolerance for change. They're very practical, very doable that you can start doing today if you are been you have been mulling over, right, some things to change in your life and what you want to make some moves on. Uh, not everything uh, is done overnight. We do have to have the patience uh, and we have to build that mastery uh, of how we deal with change and how to deal with our emotional resilience that isn't just something uh, you cultivate from, you know, um, uh, that's overnight, right? That, that just puts on this brave face to do it. We have to really analyze uh, a lot of our behavior, uh, a lot of what we're uh, saying to ourselves and our mindset and our inner languaging uh, that's either keeping us stuck on where we don't want to be or moving us forward with more positive reinforcement. And action is always great for that, right? Clarity always comes from imperfect action. Uh, so if, again, if you haven't done that already, there is a downloadable, uh, which is a resource of a guide. And these clarity questions that we went over today that you can sit uh, alone on a coffee shop or, you know, get a glass of wine and just start actually reflecting on those questions for yourself uh, so that when you're about to tackle that things that feels really scary this can really ease your fears a little bit and ease you into the confidence that you need to feel uh, to pursue uh, the best version of your life and your work uh, thank you guys for joining me. As I said, we go on live for these live learnings once a month, uh, and we always love to hear from you. So if there's anything that you would love to learn in future live learnings, what we can do to be of service to you, what we can break down, uh, just like what we did today to help you move forward with your big goals, uh, all you have to do is ask. So uh, comment below the video uh, on this live stream or if you're watching this replay, and we'll make sure to um, make sure that we're creating these lessons for you for free uh, so that you can continuously collaborate and learn with us on a virtual level uh, and share with with us on what you're learning in this community. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you guys uh, in our next live learning. Have a good day. Bye.